This video will do a case study on how to predict tree heights with linear mixed models. So the case study here is going to be predicting the heights of red pine trees. Now these red pine trees were collected at the Cloquet Forestry Center in uh, Carleton County in uh, northern Minnesota. So we're interested in predicting the tree's height based on its diameter at breast height. And so these are common measurements that foresters will collect as a part of a forest inventory. So we can consider a OLS model or an ordinary least squares model as something like this. Height is our response variable. We need to know what an intercept is and what a slope is. And we multiply that by the diameter of breast height. And that will give us some estimate of the tree's height. So here's the ordinary least squares model and a snapshot of the data. So we've got diameter at breast height on the x-axis, height on the y. And as you can see, trees that are large in diameter are also tall in height. Uh, and so we have a pretty nice correlation here. And I'm showing here the linear regression line, and these are the 95% confidence intervals uh, around the regression line. And so when we do this, when we predict the height in R, we get uh, an estimate for the beta 0, the intercept, and the slope beta 1. So pretty common uh, use of regression. Now we want to take a look at the data to understand a little bit more about how it was collected. As it turns out, if we look at the data and how they're collected at the Cloquet Forestry Center, one of the key measurements that they collect is the cover type. Now this is generally what species is dominant in the forest that these trees reside in. So as you might expect, uh, now this is the same scatter plot you saw in the previous graph, but it's faceted out by the different cover types. And so there are several of them at uh, the Cloquet Forestry Center. Now, as you might expect, most of the red pine trees at Cloquet are found in the red pine cover type, but not necessarily all of them. There are lots of red pine trees growing in what's designated as the aspen cover type, uh, and then lesser known for other ones. Well, it looks like there are two red pine trees in the balsam fir cover type. Um, and so this is just a little snapshot of the data. So let's take into account what we know about the cover type into our next analysis. Now, we could even do a facet plot that's even larger by taking into account all the different plots where red pine trees were measured. Now, as you look at this, don't try to understand and look at every plot, but it's the same plot that you've seen, the diameter on the x-axis, the height on the y-axis. But now what we're seeing is the heights of all of the trees in that, in those different plots. And so there are lots of different plots, and there are not a ton of trees in every plot. Uh, you know, most plots have one, uh, maybe two trees. A few have maybe as much as 10. But we can begin to see that if you look at some of these plots, many of the tree heights are pretty consistent. Uh, and so might we be able to use not only the plot, but also the cover type in terms of our mixed model to come up with a better understanding of what the tree's height might be. And so let's go ahead and do that. Let's add, what if we just looked at the cover type? And so remember, I think there are 13 different cover types. What if we put a random effect on the intercept? And so here again, we're predicting height. Now we have a different, note that this value is different from the previous slide. Our intercept is 25.89 and our slope is 3.06. Um, our little B sub I is our random effect. So I here is all the 13 different cover types. Now, if we were to plot those on the graph, Note that we'll get these different lines representing the different cover types. Now, as you can see, the one with that predicts the highest height uh, is this one called Scotch Pine cover type. The green line is the paper birch. And so we can understand now that red pine growing in the paper birch cover type seem to be less tall or shorter than other trees. And so, uh, or then other cover types. And so you can see the distribution. Note that they have the same slope, but different intercepts. So this would be a, a good use of the 
random effect and placing it on the intercept. Now we've got that other variable, right? We got we have an understanding of what plot each measurement was taken on. And so here we can nest the plot within the cover type and call that the random effect. And we can specify that random effect on the intercept. Now note that you'll get here different values of beta 0 and beta 1. Now we get 30.54 for beta 0 and 2.71 for beta 1. So these values are slightly different from the previous model fits. So in this model, we can obtain the 13 different random effects for each cover type. And those are shown here, although I'm only showing the first seven of them here in the output. And we can compare them to the plot numbers within each cover type. And so as an example, this would be plot five in the red pine cover type, plot 11 in the cut cover type. And so you can imagine if we were able to modify the intercept, as an example, in plot five in the red pine cover type, we would take away 10.82 from the intercept. And that's how we would come up with a different estimate of the tree height based on the random effects. And so in R, the RANF function allows you to get the specific values of all of the random effects that you're seeing. And remember, when you look at those values for the random effects, the key assumption is that their mean is zero. And so you should be looking, if you were to plot them on a graph, about half of them above zero and about half of them below zero. So here's another short table comparing the differences in the beta zero and beta one values for the three different kinds of models that we fit to the data. As you can see, uh, the ordinary least squares model had the highest value for the intercept, uh, the slopes for the random cover type variable and the OLS model were about the same, but we, we included the random effect for the plot nested within the cover type. Our value for the slope was quite a bit smaller than for the other models. Now, if you have this, you might be saying, okay, well, which model should I choose? And so one way to do that is to look at something like the AIC value or the Ikeki information criteria. Remember, this is a handy model evaluation metric that we can use to get a better sense of how the model fits our data. Now, it's useful here because we're predicting the same thing. We're predicting the heights of the same trees, but using a different model form for it. And so the AIC is a really valuable tool to compare. Now, in the AIC, remember, the lower the value, the better. And so we can see here the lowest AIC value is from our model that specified the plot nested within the cover type as the random effect. Uh, we can see higher values for the ordinary least squares model and for the cover type as a random effect model. And so as you begin to see which kinds of models and which parameters you should set as random, using a model evaluation tool like the AIC will be really valuable to you.